Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 181. As you can see, the problem is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. It says, yesterday, yesterday I rode my bike for 48 kilometers. In the beginning of my journey, I rode at 4 kilometers per hour. I rode at 4 kilometers per hour. KPH is kilometers per hour. In the beginning, I rode at 4 kilometers per hour. Then, then I slowed down to 3 kilometers per hour for the rest of the journey. So in the beginning I was riding a little bit faster at 4 km per hour, later on I slowed down to 3 km per hour. It goes, it goes on to tell us that had I biked at 3 km per hour when I biked at, biked at 4 km per hour and vice versa, I would have gone 5 km less in the same amount of time. In other words, in the beginning I was going faster, then I slowed down, had I, had I done it in reverse, had I gone slower in the beginning and then faster towards the end of the journey, then in that scenario, we are told that I would have traveled five kilometers less in the same amount of time. The question is very simple, very straightforward. The question simply is, how long did I bike? How long did it take me to make this journey of 48 kilometers? As you can see clearly, the problem deals with the notion of time and distance. And this is not the very first time we are doing this problem, word problem dealing with time and distance. Right now I'm going to list you, give you the list of the problems that we have already done with the same concept. The very first one we did was number 166, this is 181, then we did 167 with the same, same idea, time and distance, then we did 172, then we did 176, and this one of course is 181, the next one we'll do with the same idea is 184, it's going to be 184, and then we'll do two more, 186 and 187. What I'm trying to point out here is that, what I'm trying to point out here is that if this is the first time you're coming across this thing, make sure you watch the previous problems first because it helps. It helps in your understanding. As you can clearly see, it deals with time and distance. Because of the fact that it deals with time and distance, we have to first have to we first have to have a very clear understanding of the very basic concept that one has to deal with, that one has to encounter, which is how to express this notion of time and distance and speed. It is very straightforward. Don't call it don't call it a formula. Don't try to memorize it. It's very simple, very straightforward. Something that we do in our everyday life, everyday life. For example, if I tell you, for example, if I tell you that I travel, if I tell you that I travel at three kilometers per hour, and if I tell you that I went for I walk for seven hours at three kilometers per hour, how far do you suppose? How far do you suppose I would I would I would go? I would have gone in seven hours. If I tell you that I was going at the speed of three kilometers per hour, well, it's very simple, isn't it? Three kilometers per hour, three kilometers per hour. Let's write this instead of writing in a fancy way. Let's write this as three kilometers per hour. And had I gone for seven hours, obviously I would have gone 21 kilometers. 21 kilometers. Very simple, very straightforward. There's nothing there to memorize. As you can clearly see, the unit of hours drop out. The hour cancels out with this hour, and we end up with 21 kilometers, 7 times 3, 21 kilometers. And what does this represent? Well, this is the 3 kilometers per hour, the first part here, 3 kilometers per hour, that's my speed. This is the time. And this is the distance. So if you were to represent the speed in this problem, we're going to use letter S for speed, the speed, and we're going to use T for time expressed in hours, and D for distance. Okay, stay with me. If that's the case, then the time would have to be distance divided by the speed. Distance divided by the speed. That's what we have to understand. The amount of time that we're going to represent for each of these segments. There are two segments in this journey. The first segment when I'm going faster, and the second segment where I'm going slower. Of course, we do not know how long each segment is. Of course, if we knew that, life would be much easier. All we know is that in the beginning I went faster, then I slowed down. Had I done the other way around, I would have gone 5 kilometers less. That's all we are told. So here's the time. We're going to use this concept, this notion, to represent the time that we spend on each segment of the journey. The segment where we were going faster, and the second part of the journey when we were going slower. So let's begin. Let's begin. We need the room, so I'm going to raise all of this thing. Let's begin here. And represent our journey. 
our journey we know our journey we know is 48 kilometers. Now if you want to, I, I forgot to mention this thing, I forgot to point it out to you. If you want to try this yourself first, you, you, you should do that. Pause the video, follow the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I are about to do together. And then compare the two works. You will always find that you will learn more that way. I'll give you five seconds, I'll get out of your way now, I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video and so that you can have, also have the unobstruct, unobstructed view of the problem. Okay, here we go. Try it yourself first. Okay, here we go. So the total distance, the total distance from here to here, the total distance we know is 48 kilometers. We are told that. Part of that distance, let's call it d kilometers, I was going in the beginning at 4 kilometers per hour. At 4 kilometers per hour. That's the beginning part. Then I slowed down. Well, since, since we are traveling 48 kilometers altogether, if, if we travel d kilometers, at the faster speed, then the remaining distance must be 48 minus d. 48 minus d kilometers, this, this, this segment of the journey, I must have gone at, at 3 kilometers per hour. At 3 kilometers per hour. Let's find out, let's find out what they translates into the time, the time segment for each of this journey. I'm going to raise this thing, we're done with this thing. So the time, as we just saw here, let's call it T1, for the this first segment and T2 for the second segment. The T1, the first segment, is going to be the distance which is d kilometers over the speed which is 4 kilometers per hour. 4 kilometers per hour. 4 kilometers per hour. As you can see again, as we can clearly see again, the kilometers are going to drop out, the kilometers are going to drop out, and this hour is going to end up on the top because that's the T. It's, it's the time period. Of course, it has to be expressed in hours. And what, how, how long did I travel? How long did I travel the first segment of the journey? It's right here, D over 4 hours. T1 is D over 4, D over 4, D over 4 hours. Similarly, the second segment, the T2, is going to be the distance that I travel, which is 48 minus d kilometers, 48 minus d kilometers over, what speed were we going? When we slowed down, we were going at 3 kilometers per hour. 3 kilometers per hour. And again, the kilometer is going to drop out, and the hours are going to end up on the top, and that's how many hours we went. So the second second segment we traveled for 48 minus d over 3 hours. That's it. We're done with the first scenario. Now we will do the reverse scenario right here. Reverse scenario. Let's do it on the top. So that's what we extract from the first scenario. Let's do the reverse scenario now and see what we can get out of that. So here is the reverse scenario. So, so it says that had I biked, had I biked, had I biked D over 4 kilometers, or D over 4 hours rather, had I biked D over 4 hours at 3 kilometers per hour. See, I slowed down in the beginning and 48 minus D over 48 minus D over 3 hours at 4 kilometers per hour. Had I done that, had I gone slow, slower in the beginning and faster towards the end, in that scenario, I would have would have covered, would have gone 5 kilometer shorter. That's the gist of it. I would have gone 5 kilometers less. In that scenario, in the reverse scenario, this, this is the amount of time. In the first segment, in the first segment we, were, we spent D over 4 hours. In the second segment, we spent 48 minus D over 3 hours. 
and I use that time that I used to go at the faster speed instead had I used that time to go at a slower speed in the beginning and I had I used the amount of time that I used originally at a fast at, at a slower speed had I used that time to go now at a faster speed had I done the opposite I would have gone five kilometers less let's say we are done with this thing now we can get an equation out of it what's what happens now we can get an equation out of it so if you're going this many hours at three kilometers per hour if you're going this many hours at three kilometers per hour what's the distance you're traveling the first distance is the first amount of distance is going to be the speed that you have here three kilometers per hour times d over four hours as you can see again as you can see clearly again the hours are going to drop out and what we're left with are the kilometers it's going to be three times d over four kilometers that's the first segment of the journey continue plus the second segment of the journey we are going at four kilometers per hour four kilometers per hour at four kilometers per hour for how many hours not at rather but for how many hours 48 minus d over 3 48 minus d over 3 hours as you can see i'm going very slowly because that's how if you don't go slowly you're going to make a mistake in the beginning you have to first learn the techniques you have to first learn the trade you have to first master it before you before you worry about the speed that's it and now this distance that i travel here again you see the hours are going to drop out here the hours are going to drop out and what we end up with is the kilometers so this is our second segment of the journey this is our first segment of the journey and what does this distance represent this distance that you see there in the reverse scenario in the reverse scenario the distance that we represent here in the reverse scenario we are told that i would have gone five kilometers less than before but how long did i go before in the original scenario in the original scenario i went 48 kilometers well if i went 48 kilometers in the original scenario then this distance that you see is five less than that and that's all it is that's all it is all you have to do now is to work on this equation and solve for d because d is the only unknown variable in this equation everything else is a known quantity you have to work on this equation and solve for d once we have the distance we can figure out the amount of time because the question was how long did i travel well in, in order for us to figure out how long we travel we already know the speed we know that we went at four kilometers per hour in the beginning we went second cl uh, three kilometers per hour towards the end we know the speeds if you can figure out the distance we can figure out the total amount of time because the question was how long did the journey take me to how long did the journey take uh, for me uh, at, uh, when I was going this 48 kilometers we'll find out let's work on it we need the room obviously to all of this is going to go I'm going to give you unobstructed view before I erase it so one more time this is not the first time we have done the time distance problem there are two problems right here we did 166 167 then we did two more 172 176 and right now we are in the process of doing 181 this is 181 and we're gonna i'm gonna do one more at 184 and then there are going to be two more 186 and 187 there are eight problems there and that should be plenty make sure you work through all of them okay let's get going i'm going to pick up speed now so here we have three times d which is 3d over four 3d over four which is a kilometer i'm not going to write down the unit this is kilometer and this is kilometer they are all kilometers you see right here is the kilometers is the kilometers and this is the kilometers plus so this part is done plus four times 48 four times 48 minus d over three equals 48 minus five which is 43 the very first thing we need to do is to make sure that our, we have the same common denominator it, it helps it helps to have the same common denominator if it, it helps to have this a common denominator because if you have the same denominators everywhere if you have the same denominators everywhere then the denominator plays no role the denominator loses significance and we can just work on the numerator here we have a denominator of four here we have a denominator of three here we have a denominator of one what can we do why don't we make the entire why don't we make the denominator of the entire equation 12 how can we convert this denominator of 4 into a 12 is very easy take this part take this quantity and multiply it by 3 over 3 we haven't changed anything 3 over 3 is just 1 we are just multiplying it by 1 here we have a denominator of 3 we want a 12 let's multiply this quantity by 4 over 4 multiply this quantity by 4 over 4 
And similarly here, we're going to multiply by 12 over 12. That's it. Now we can go to the next step. Now we can go on to the next step. 3 times 3 is 9, so we have 90 here. And here, remember, we have 4 here and we have 4 here, so it's 16. So it's 16 times 48, whatever that is. 16 times 48 minus 4 times 4 is 16 minus times D. Don't forget, we have 4 times 4 is 16 times D. 16D. So for the time being, I'm going to leave it like this and we're going to worry about that in a second. We're going to worry about that in a second. And this is 43 times 12. I'm going to leave that as well. 9D and 16D is going to be minus 7D. Why don't we bring this... Why don't we... 9D and a negative 16D is negative 7D. Why don't we bring the 7D to that side? So 7D would have to equal and then bring this quantity over here. 16 times 48 minus... 43 times 12. So we're going to pick up this, we're going to pick this up on the top. Again, as always, we need the room, so I'm going to have to erase everything. One more time before I erase it, I'll give you unobstructed view. Let's hope and pray to God that I haven't made an error. So we're going to pick up from here 7D equals. 16 times 48, 16 times 48, I don't, 16 times 48, let's figure it out here. How much is 16 times 48? Well, let's see, 16 times 100 is 1600, okay, stay with me in the story. 16 times 100 is 1600, therefore 16 times 50, 16 times 50 would be 800. We don't want 50, we want 48, so just subtract 32 from it. Subtract 216 from it. If you subtract 216 from 800, 800 minus 30 would have been 770. So it's going to be 768. 768. As I said, let's hope and pray to God that I have not made an error. 768. And then this one here, we have 12 times 43. We need to figure out 43 times 12. We can actually do it out or we can do the same technique, which is going to be 10 times 43 is going to be 430 plus 24. 454. Oh, this one is so easy. We could have actually done it out. It doesn't take that long. 12 times 3 is 36. 6 carry 3. 12 fours are 48. 48 plus 3 is 51, which is not the same as this damn thing. What did, I, what did I make a mistake? My logic was 43. Ah, I know what I did. 40. If you have 10 43s, this represents the 10 43s. This represents the 10 43s. You see? And the 12 does not represent two 43s. I made a mistake. I was too cocky. I was too too cocky, too careless. What we need is two two more 43s, not two more 12s. We, I wasn't counting by 12s. I was counting by 43s. We need 12 43s. We, this is 10 43s. I need two more 43s. It should have been 46. Two more two more 40 two more 43 is 86, not 46. 2 more 43 is 86 and now it would work now it will get the same answer 6 3 plus 8 is 5, 11 1 carry 1 and 5 voila I should have just done that I hope that this is correct so 70 equals 6, 6, 16 times 48 which is 678 minus this guy 516 let's find out here Let's find out here. 768 minus 516, which is going to give us 2. 6 minus 1 is 5. This becomes 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. 152. 152. Remember it. 152. So, which means that D must equal 152 over 7. 152 over 7. Let's divide 152 by 7 right here. 152. We're going to divide it by 7. Oh, we could have done it here. Let's do it right here. How many 7 does 1 have? Listen very carefully. How many, how many 7 does 1 have? 1 has no 7s. 1 has no 7. 1 has no 7. That 1 goes and joins the 5. Joins the 5. I get 152. It makes me very nervous. I made a mistake somewhere. Did I make a mistake in my subtraction? This thing is not working out. Yes, I made a mistake because you see, 
68 is more than 16. 68 is more than which is why I prefer not to do it out the geeky way, the nerdy way, because sometimes the common logic actually helps. I'm going to redo it. You can, as you can clearly see, 68 is more than 16. Since it's more than 16, therefore 700 minus 500 would be 200. This should have been 2. This should have been 2. This should have been 2. Let me start again. It is 252. 200 and 52. I began to get nervous because we were not getting whole numbers. And I remember that this distance was a whole number. I remember it because I made it. So again, 700 minus 500 is 200, and 68 minus 6, 68 minus 18, this is the way I should have done it, 68 minus 18 would have been 50. It is not 18, it's 16, therefore instead of 68 minus 16 would be 52. You see how much easier it is instead of doing it out the geeky way? Anyway, let's continue now. We're going to divide 252 by 7, okay? I'm going to pick up speed now. How many 7 does 2 have? 2 has no 7s. 2 has no 7s. That 2 goes and joins the 5. That 2 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 25. How many 7 does 25 have? 25 has 3 7s. Seven. 3 7s are 21. 25 has 3 7s. Seven. 3 7s seven are 21. The remaining 4 from the 25 goes and joins the 2 and becomes 42. And 42 has 6 7s. Voila. He must have traveled 36 kilometers. 36 kilometers. We are still not quite done because the question was not how long. The question was not. Uh, the question was not uh, how how long of a segment it was. The first segment and the second segment. The question was how how long did it take to make the entire journey. The question was how long did I bike. So let's find out. So this is how much the first segment was. We're going to draw the picture here and do it out very quickly. So here we go. So D represented the first segment, which was right here, D, which we just found out is 36 kilometers. And how fast were we going in the beginning? We were going at 4 kilometers per hour. Well, if you're going 4 kilometers per hour for 36 kilometers, that implies that you must have gone 9 hours. So that's the first part. Well, if you went 46 kilometers in the beginning, since the total distance was 48 kilometers, and you went 36 kilometers in the beginning, you must have gone 12 kilometers, 12 kilometers, the second part at 3 kilometers per hour, 3 kilometers per hour. At 3 kilometers per hour, if you want to go 12 kilometers, will take 4 hours. So the answer is, how long, did, how long did my journey take? My entire journey took me 13 hours. 13 hours. We're not quite done yet. Now I'm going to take a couple of seconds, about 20 or 30 seconds, to verify our work, make sure that this answer is correct. Let's do the verification right here. Let's do the verification right here. In the verification, what we are doing is reverse. We are going to go 9 hours. We are going to go 9 hours at not 4 kilometers per hour, but at a slower speed, at 3 kilometers per hour. Watch what happens, 3 kilometers per hour. Or if you are going 9 hours at 3 kilometers per hour, which is the reverse scenario, this is the reverse scenario, remember. This is the reverse scenario. If you are going 9 kilometers at 3, 9, nine hours, if you're going for 9 hours at 3 kilometers per hour, that implies that you will go 27 kilometers. You with me? And then, the second part, we went, the second segment, we went for 4 hours. If you're going to go 4 hours at the faster speed, at 4 kilometers per hour, at the faster speed of 4 kilometers per hour, you would be able to go 16 kilometers. Watch what happens. If you add up the two segments, we get 13, carry 1, we go 43 kilometers per hour, 43 kilometers, well, not per hour, but you would you would only be able to manage to go 43 kilometers. Originally, originally we had gone 48 kilometers. 43 kilometers implies that you would go five kilometers less. The amount of distance that you will cover will be five kilometers less than before had you were done your speeds in reverse, which is exactly what the problem told us. That tells me that our answer is correct. We we traveled a total of 13 hours, we spent 9 hours at the faster speed, and then we slowed down the last 4 hours at a slower speed of 3 kilometers per hour. Why now?